Hey all, I'm Matt Donald. You probably know me from this podcast or from my book, Megazoic, which you could buy on Amazon.com. Ding. I'm not getting into ding that time because I'm lazy. But anyways, so this is the podcast the right way. You, If you haven't listened to it, then what the hell are you doing here? But if you haven't, I guess, welcome. We're glad to have you here. And this is the clip show to celebrate 10 wonderful episodes. So you know just what kind of nonsense you get into when you listen to this. Hey, look, I got a text. I am so popular with my mother because she's the one who said this. Uh, I'm totally going to not edit this out. All right, anyways. So, this is a clip show to celebrate the ten episodes that we've done and all my favorite parts. Don't worry, this isn't going to replace this month's episode. We're going to record that this Friday, but I just thought you'd all enjoy this so you can see what kind of nonsense we get into with this podcast. It's the friggin' best. All right, so this is our first episode of the podcast. And you know how podcasts, they often have theme songs? So, uh... I know I'm just kind of throwing this out in here, but I'm going to start doing like a sort of tune, and I want you to beatbox on. You can do that, right? I should be able to. All right, right? <clears throat> do I really have to do this? Uh, you know, you want to be taken seriously as a podcaster, then yes. Okay. Well, I mean, this is our first episode. We could add it later. Oh, pff, I say be in the now. You know me to be an adventurous fellow, right? All right adventurous. Well. Anyways, all right, right. Well, let's hear it. Podcast. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay. This is the Red White theme song. I can't do it. Uh, I tried. I'm I'm no singer. A you, for effort. You give it a go. I, I dare you to do better. This is a Red White theme song. You didn't have to show off. <laughs> you asked me to give it a good effort. All right. For this month's Ritwit, I decided to enlist the help of my niece and nephew to do the theme song with me. So let's let's get this thing rocking, shall we? The Ritwit! <laughs> the Ritwit! The Ritwit! The Ritwit Podcast! Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Uh, thanks for the help, guys. You're welcome, Uncle Max! You're welcome, Uncle Max! I'll, I'll take that as a, you're welcome. Okay, I'll be sure to thank you guys in my Grammy acceptance speech. I know a lot of people thought that we'd step up our game after the last two theme songs. <laughs> you, were mis you were mistaken. You were all very much mistaken. The Red Welcome, fellow nerds, to another episode of The Rit Witch, the show where we ask life's most important questions, like, Why the f*** is my hair already thinning? <laughs> I'm only 25, damn it! <laughs> Life happens to all of us in stages. Don't worry, I'm gonna censor that out. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> For the kids in the show. <laughs> I... <sighs> I'm sorry, it's really bothering me. Yeah, I get it. I, uh, I understand. I understand. Because remember, I, I'm younger than you. Anyway. Uh, is your hair already thinning too? Well, the hairline, I think it's receding. But anyway, it's not that big of a deal at the moment. I got I got a haircut uh, last week. And they she told me about my hairline already thinning. I'm like, how old are you? And I'm like, I'm only 25. She's like, oh God. I'm like, yeah, please tell me more about that. Just say, oh, <laughs> that's where you want to hear your barber to say, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you inspired the barber to new heights. Anyway, uh, uh, we always start our segments with uh talking about what we're going to rip off they say everything is a rip off of something else so here's a segment of the show where we talk about what we ripped off or plan to rip off i guess to put it very eloquently <laughs> <laughs> i got a couple of things mm -hmm. that i've been watching recently one of them was a show a very old show called ultra seven and to explain just a little about it, it was a very early entry into the long-running Ultraman series. But one oh, thing... you and your Japanese watching stuff. I mean, I know you're in Japan, but 
Hey, it's a good way Wait. to study the language. Anyway. I guess it's true. I, you have to learn the language. And also, I watch primarily American shows, and I'm in America. Weird, isn't it? Anyway, Ooh. there is one idea that really caught my attention as I was watching this one episode, and I just had this thought, like, the difference between a doctor's M.O. and a general's M.O. Mm. Uh, modus operandi, in case M.O. is not... Yeah, like I was about to ask. I just finished Moana, like, tonight. I oh. was watching it, and... I liked it. I liked it a lot. However, the one comment I'll make before we move on, this bothered me way more than it should have. <laughs> near the end, I don't want to spoil too much, but near the end, okay, near the very end, the way I'm not going to spoil is by not giving out details. Moana inadvertently puts to a halt a generations-long family t- tradition due to structural problems. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and if you've seen the movie, <laughs> you should know what I'm talking about. That bothered me way more than it should have. <laughs> oh, yeah, Absolutely. The point that I brought up, the end, the thing that bothered me way more than it should have, I brought it up to a bunch of other people, and they all said a few things. First off, I'm an idiot. Second off, <laughs> that's that was the entire point. So, spoiler alert for Moana. Yeah. At the very end, uh, spoiler alert for like 30 seconds or so. All right. At the very end, he uh, that she put a seashell on top of a bunch of rocks that would show that, and because t- their tradition was they put a rock on top of the mountain in order to. Um, Keep the generational line going. It's like you're you're now the highest part of this mountain, right? Now she at the end puts a seashell instead of a rock. And at first I was like, well, well that doesn't make any sense. Now no one can put anything on top of it. Like I said, structural <laughs> issues with the exact wording I said. But people brought up that that was entirely the point because at the end they all go sailing off the island and explore and become voyagers again. And so I was Which like, well, means that whoops. They can create new piles of rock in other places right. if they want to see if right. they want to become sedentary again. Right. So, and third off, I'm an idiot. So, those are the three uh, things are, they brought up. You already covered that in the first point, I think. But it anyway. Was so, it was so relevant that they it had to say it twice. <laughs> I was going to guess my next guess, but anyway. I've been rereading the uh, seminal series, The Chronicles of Narnia, and one of the things, one of the, well, the, one of the books that I've read, of course, was a very inter- had a very interesting storytelling tactic that I would like to rip off in some story of mine in the near future, and that is this. Okay. The horse and his boy, with third right. book chronologically in the series, if you want to think about that. It right. involves two human travelers coming from the south or uh, southern parts of the world to Narnia, which is in the north, and... There's this. Oh, major... Narnia is just the northern part of the fantasy world. I didn't know that. I need to read these books. <laughs> You've never read the books. Of... Never mind. Anyway, I'm a writer. I'm a professional <laughs> author. Well, you're a part-time barista and a published author, <laughs> and I'm an English major. <laughs> Guess what, Matt? I'm reading a book. What? I know. I'm the worst author ever because. The, the advice for every author, every author gives to people who want to be a writer is, well, read. You gotta I read. I don't yep. read. <laughs> I see. I mean, I, I get my creative inspiration from other works. I think that that's what, more what they mean, or at least that's how I interpret it. <laughs> well, that's the idea. You know, you see what you like. So I'm reading, I'm rereading, I should say, this series by one of our favorite authors, both of you and I, uh, yep. T.A. Barron, uh, The Great Tree of Avalon. Uh, it's a sequel series to his Lost Years of Merlin that you've read. I, uh, I don't read think you've read this sorry. one. It's pretty good. I really like it. The idea behind it, it's sort of like Norse mythology in that the world is a tree. What happens mm-hmm. here is that, um, so in between the previous series, the Lost Years of Merlin, and this series, the Great Tree of Avalon, Merlin plants a seed onto this dead world of whatever the world was in the last one. It began with an F. No, what it's called. Finkyra, that's how it was, yes. Uh, it was do- dead, but he gave he made it reborn by turning it into this tree of Avalon, and this tree is enormous. Sure. Like, well, it wouldn't be the hundreds great upon tree hundreds of miles enormous. tall. But unlike Norse mythology, though, where like there's different worlds on each of the branches, where pretty much all the humans and other people and other and a lot of a lot of the other not too mystical races live on the roots, hmm. and all the roots are different. And like, there's a water root, there's a wood root, and. Um, as you get further up, it gets more mystical. And here's the thing I think is really cool about it. The stars from the roots, they look just like stars. But if you, as you get closer up, you realize they're just the tips of the branches. Like the constellations are the way the branches are faded, or look from the floor. And I think that's a really cool idea. 
That is like, incredible. I, I haven't read The Great Tree of Avalon. I don't know why, because T.A. Barron is an amazing author, but... Well, like, at the beginning, he, the main character, Tamwin, he talks about, he would he wonders if anyone could travel to the stars. And when being my natural sci-fi self, I was thinking, really? They're going to bring spaceships into this? But no, they do it in a far <laughs> more interesting way. So, well, yeah, they just climb up the tree. But anyways... Hey, guess what, David? I'm reading another book! Oh my god! What would this podcast be without us insulting each other? Although I say that like you have ever insulted me. It's more just me relentlessly bashing you and you just take it. <laughs> I, eh, I keep you around for a reason. Oh, God. That makes me really scared. <laughs> you're, preparing for, you're preparing for a big insult later. Well, my character and then one of our friends, we, we need to get him on the podcast as like a co-host or a guest host or something. But, well, he can do it now, so yeah. Well, maybe. But anyway, no, no, it's the, it's the other one. Oh. Well, he, um, <laughs> he could, but... They can all do it. Let's get a four-man person Let, going Let's on. do it. But anyway, well, we let, well let's, let's not forget our dear uh, medical expert friend. I actually used that line, by the way. But anyway. Nice, nice. Good job. Uh, and let's not so forget my a... mother. She always wants to be on. No, she doesn't, but... Well, wait, 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 wait. Are you talking, are you talking about the AE crew, or are you talking about the podcast? But anyway. I'm talking uh, about my literal mother. <laughs> yes, I understand your literal mother. I'm just saying. She wants to be... A, yeah, she wants to be on the AE crew. She, she's really Well, that's excited. that's what I was referencing. What did you think it was She was about? the team mom. Oh, thanks. But anyway. Anyways, enough... Thanks, mom. Goddamn so, filler. <laughs> Just Let's talk about flawlessly. world building, damn it. <laughs> we're, we're building the world of this podcast. Come on. <laughs> oh, we're info dumping the world of this podcast. No, we're not info dumping yet. Uh, because uh, we'll it's not info, that. we're just blathering. But, I mean, just edit it out flawlessly, right? Running joke? <laughs> anyway. This month we're going to talk about world building, aren't we, David? Sorry, spoilers for Harry Potter, by the way. We spoil Harry Potter so much on this show. Hey, it's such a good point, story. It's such a good story, that's why. But anyway. Well, you know, we should have a, a, a description of Harry Potter in our... A description In the description <laughs> of the Ritwit, we should say... By the way, don't listen to this if you want to, don't want to get spoiled for Harry Potter. <laughs> Make anyway. it so, anyway. So, Quidditch... Other, is not other games that you were thinking of? Okay, so speaking of Bionicle... Oh, our childhood right. favorite, Bionicle Mask of Light... The directed DVD classic <laughs> that is remembered amongst all children of all the world fondly, just as fondly as every Disney movie ever, and maybe even Harry Potter. <laughs> there is um, the beginning is this. There's a sport called Coley. There's basically a mix of soccer, lacrosse, hockey. There's often more than two teams, which is kind of cool. Um, I hear there's a really good game that someone made of it called Extreme Coley. That's a joke that no one's going to get, but... Hey, in joke. I'm going to keep it in. Because... Yeah, fine, fine, I'll let you keep it in. Hurry up, make your point. <laughs> Alright, so my point is, like, they, they play a game with it at the beginning. At first it just seems like, ah, oh, you know, it's just kind of cool, it's world building. However, at the end, of course, um, the Mask of Light, the, t the titular Mask of Light, is revealed. And his you skills mean the toe, in it Do you mean the Toa used... of Light? <laughs> well, the mask, well, yeah, but like... He, He's he wearing the, the mask. mask, he is not the mask. But I know, but the point is, like, the Mask of Light, it was in his pack during the game. When they bowed at the end, it fell out, remember? Hmm. Anyways, so, um, also, his skills that he uses during it do end up being useful in the final battle with the villain Makuta. And it also shows his insecurity. Like, he messes up a move, and he really kicks himself for it. And that's an arc that he has to overcome throughout the entire movie. So, sure. it is important. There is stuff. It's not just for world building. It is for world building, but they also incorporate it into the plot. And right. that is another example. Like, it's it's the classic example, I'd say. The archetypal example. Well, you say that because you're biased for Bionicle. I love Bionicle. If I could, I would marry Bionicle. Not just any of the characters, just the whole concept of Bionicle. I'd marry it. <laughs> I went to watch Rogue One recently, and there was something I really liked about Rogue One's approach. And I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of people I've heard that were not fond of Force Awakens. And admittedly, I'm one of them, holding my hand up. Yeah, You can't see it, but I'm holding it right in front of the microphone. Yeah, which And you is still you can't, can't see it, because that's not well. how microphones work. Exactly. But anyways, it's one of those things that The Force Awakens was very much a rehash of the plot with New Hope, it felt like. And so and a lot of to people be didn't fair, like that. And to be fair, it is. And to be fair, that was their intent. They wanted to get people back right. in with a very Star Wars-y Star Wars movie after, since people didn't really like the You know, this is, this is a brief tangent, but it's kind of like what they did with the fifth generation of Pokemon, where they created a you new are... game where everybody had to start over. There were none of sure. the old Pokemon available. I, I believe you. I've never played Pokemon. 
<laughs> yes. So we talked a little bit about your upcoming book. But... Right, Megazoic. It's going to be out on Amazon, and I'm going to be entirely honest, listeners, I'm scared crapless. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm terrified. Like, this has been my dream for a long time, and the fact that it's finally coming to life, you, you think I'd be excited, and of course I am, but I'm also terrified, because like, at yep. this point, it's not just something I can daydream about and be like, imagine the idealistic sort of vision in my head of how it'll be. This is going to be reality. And there will yeah, be no. people out there who are going to read it who I don't know and will have no bias and not all of them are going to like it. And, and honestly, I don't know if anyone's going to like it. No, surely someone's going to like it. But You'll find there's always the risk. Will. Yep. And my you're book putting is, a part of yourself out there, right? Right. And also, my book is weird enough. Like, it's an odd enough concept. I think it's going to work in its favor, but I could be wrong. Like, I just don't know until I do it and I'm really terrified. I am getting some early feedback, though, from my pre-reviewers, and the responses are 100% positive so far. The most negative thing I've gotten was someone being like, this isn't the normal kind of the stuff I would read, but I really do like it still. Like, and, I'm, and I asked her, what is this kind of stuff you normally read? And she's like, Stephen King. I'm like, yeah, this is nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> We mentioned at some point about getting somebody's attention with an opening line, and I, I don't have much time to sit down and write a story in recent times, so I've done a lot of, you know... What are you doing on this podcast? Ah, no, that's fine. <laughs> well, excuse me for having a job outside of writing, but... And also, we talk about writing. We, You know a lot about writing, even if you don't do a lot of writing. I don't do a lot of reading, and yet somehow I have the gall to be a published author. Well, so. I mean, it's... I mean, we're at different phases of the process. I do a lot of reading, and so that's where most of my knowledge about writing comes from. I do have a little bit of experience mm. in my own writing, too. I'm, I'm plus, or, okay, but no, you I'm, have a lot I'm, more I'm experience in writing your own stories and not perhaps as and much And less reading. experience in reading. <laughs> it's, it's okay. But anyway. We've all got it backwards, you and I. Shot, you, did you see the thing in Civil War where he, like, sold by himself over the helicopter, the helicopter back in? Flexes it. Whew. Good lord. Oh, I, I would turn gay for that. That was I amazing. was turning gay for that. <laughs> for those brief seconds, I'm like, I want, ah, I want, want you, you, Captain America. <laughs> Come to me. Give me a hug with those massive biceps. <laughs> Crush me. I just want to kiss them. Oh my goodness! Oh, I just oh. you cannot see how red I am turning right now. This Man. is hilarious. Ugh. He had such—I mean, his butt's probably okay. It's a little bit—it's a little bit scrawny. I'm totally straight, by the way. Yeah, so although, am I. A lot of people thought I was gay in college. Oh, I've no gotten, context. I've gotten needed. that too. So there's a story I wrote back in the day called Wild, "Wildlife of Tomorrow." Um, I might do something more with it in the future. I don't know, but you heard it here first. If you—if I do, uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> Anyway, so um, it was so I wrote the first book. Then I wrote the second book, uh, and I was writing the second book, and I was planning it for it to be the end. And I won't really say why, but I don't you, want to get into the details. You were planning I can't, for it to be the end. <laughs> I was planning it for it to be the end until oh. the final chapter, where I was oh. like, you know what, you know what, I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna write a little bit more. Then I wrote this super obvious sequel hook, and then uh, David and then here read the this. Read this, yeah, and it ended the book, and I, was, and I think it actually said "to be continued" in Wildlife of Tomorrow three. And then <laughs> David read this and said, "Like Donald, stop! <laughs> <laughs> just, just use that famous backspace key that we love so much, <laughs> <laughs> and then rewrite that." <laughs> You know, maybe we should do an episode where we talk about all of our projects that we had written in the past. We keep referencing, and none of our listeners have any idea what they are. <laughs> like. I think we mentioned Wild for Tomorrow like four or five times, and I still don't think we ever explained what the hell it is. Well, um, I, I believe we had we had a very good friend of the podcast who did a pre-review of our pilot and said, uh, you know, give elevator pitches. And I think we did give elevator pitches for a lot of the stuff. I don't know if all of them have received well, okay. that, that treatment. Maybe. But Maybe we should do still. an episode that just to talk about our embarrassing old stories just to say, you can get better. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Like, we were better than idea. you, but at one point we were worse than you are now, so... It's funny you're one. talking about Marvel Cinematic Star Wars crossover, because if you look at uh, actual books, books, not comic books, there was a Star Trek Green Lantern crossover. I heard about that. And a Star Trek X-Men crossover. I heard about that, too. Time. Oh, man, that's So that means that... Fun that possibilities. Must, that must mean, through their connection to Star Trek, that Green Lantern and X-Men are in the same universe. Which <sighs> means that Marvel and DC have an in. Oh, there we go. And it's through Star Trek. <laughs> 
So that's what we're talking about ripping and off. And apparently, this week. if there's a Marvel Studios Star Wars crossover, that means that Star Trek and Star Wars are in the same universe. Lord help us all. Too many space The Trekkies operas. and whatever the Star Wars fans call themselves will unite at last. The Warsies? I don't. The Warsies. <laughs> The Trekkies and the Warsies. <laughs> they once hated each other, but now they're united. The Warsies just sounds like some kind of mystical race. And, going and then along. they just go, and then once they're united, they go after I don't know Harry Potter fans. <laughs> I just give it up. Well, the potties. That doesn't I work. Don't know. No, that doesn't work. Oh my work. god! What did I was I think? Uh, he has a potty mouth. Obviously, this is the real world, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if you're gonna censor that one out. Anyway, no. <laughs> <laughs> that one time you censored an f bomb in the intro. Ugh. Okay, no Where's more. The bleep is my hair. Any f bombs I make now are gonna be ready to go. Not ready to go. They're gonna be. I'm, I'm censoring myself just by not knowing what I'm saying. I'm playing Injustice Two. Okay. All right. It's, so okay. It's the it? sequel to Injustice: Gods Among Us, which it's a fighting game series by the guys who did Mortal Kombat, uh, based on the DC universe, right? And sure, there could be two characters, and one of them really hates the other one, but the other one doesn't really know it. And the example I give here is a real-life situation. When I was in college, I lived with a house with a bunch of people. I won't say anyone's names because, you know, I'm a nice guy and that. There's this one person that I really, really, really didn't care for. But I still tried to be nice to him because I knew I had to live with him and stuff. He, there was just a lot of things he did that I disagreed with. No need to get into terrible specific. Well, I just want people to realize that I didn't hate him for no reason. It was just like, I'm spinning a roulette wheel. I hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting way to go. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, there's six other roommates in the house. Who's he gonna land on? Oh, him. Hate him. <laughs> I just hate him. My God, I hate him so much. That's the one. <laughs> the final part should be your character overcoming amazing odds, but at the same time, doing it in a way that feels like they could. And a shout out to one of our friends in more real life than this podcast, but um, you have to make it doable, right? I remember one. I remember this gentleman had a ship design that was we, he was trying to beat, and we're just trying to come up, rack our brain, trying to find a way to actually make this believable, beatable. Mm -hmm. And so it took us a while. So you may have to be. Uh, well, shall we say flexible, but certainly don't make it so impossible that it couldn't be solved. Or if, it, or if it is impossible, don't make it so the hero suddenly gets some sort of magic ability to, to either a MacGuffin or Deus Ex Machina, which, or just them being a Mary Sue, where they, or them being Mary Sue, where they, they never wield a sword everything. in their life, and then they're suddenly an expert at it. Oh look, suddenly Excalibur comes out of the stone for me, and it just happens to fit right there. Oh look, I've never wielded a lightsaber before, and I'm taking down this guy first order. Guy. I really didn't like Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Have Apparently I said that before? Not. <laughs> God, I did not like that movie. I do like strong female leads. Like I like to. Like, um, yeah, Megazog. There's a couple in it, right? I mean, spoiler alert for the end of it. <laughs> sure. But, uh, I need to have a self-censor, David. I really do. <laughs> I, I don't have any. So professional here. <laughs> there, okay, there's a male main character and a female character who spend a lot of time together. I try to make sure that both of them have an arc in the plot that doesn't involve each other. It's like an extreme version so. of the Bechtel test, isn't it? I don't know, probably. Well, uh, the Bechdel test, the is, Bechdel test is, sort of is, interesting is, is two females talking about not a guy, right? Right, but there's actually more to it than that I found out recently. It's also, like, how many scenes they do it as well. If it's just one scene... Then that doesn't um, really... Yeah, I, mean, I mean, it does count more than a lot of other stories, sadly. My, uh, Megazoic actually passes it, I checked, in a, in a scene in Chapter 4. All right, you don't have to tell uh, us about where, the whole thing. Spoiler alert for Megazoic, unless you want to buy it on Amazon.com. Cheap plug! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and every time you're going to say, cheap plug. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I and if you want help joke. on that, listen to episode three, starting, continuing, and finishing a story. <laughs> what a cheap plug. Love it. For more information, listen to episode three of The Ritwit. Are we making another companion episode of that? Anyway. Yep, every episode this far is a companion episode of that. <laughs> well, I mean, if we're all talking about writing. You saw how thick my book is. I mean, not in person yet. You will. Buy it on Amazon.com. Yes, please. Follow your own cheap plug advice, David. <laughs> <laughs> I already <laughs> bought it on a tablet. Come on. Eh, okay, fine. I'll, I'll thank you for that. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, I did know that. That's what I was going to do with music. Okay. <laughs>
God, no one gives me anything good that I'm just always surprised <laughs> with when I see someone actually be generous to me, even if they actually have already told me. <laughs> so. Here is your golf clap. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I, I definitely earned this. It's nice to have someone <laughs> clapping, clapping to me. You realize how much I miss that? Everyone hates me. It's nice to get those little moments of appreciation to be like, hey, Matt, good job. <laughs> We're rolling in the dough from our sub or from our listeners, subscribers. Thank you for your support. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to go sleep in my money bed. <laughs> I'm going to go dive in my money bed. Yeah, Scrooge, Scrooge thanks, McDuck Scrooge. style. <laughs> thanks, Scrooge. By the way, that doesn't work, by the yeah, way. Better, better get the bulldozer so you can make it more like a pool rather than just Here's the a thing about gold. gold. Here's the thing about coins. You can't swim in it. I'm sorry. It, I'm sorry to break your nostalgia. But, but it's Disney. It's Come solid. On. You can't swim through it. Even if there's a bunch of them, it's hard. Like... Well, gold is well, is surprisingly heavy, especially in bullion form, Joe. Right. Did you know that Scrooge McDuck's bunny bin is actually just his physical change? Like, that's that's not even all he has. It's like a third of what he has. <laughs> that wouldn't be surprising. He's got a bank account full in the, in the Duckburg. Is it Duckburg for Scrooge McDuck? I can't remember. It's just the show that DuckTales... The, the, no, city, that the, Duck, the, the, the show city that is, DuckTales says it. Right, but I think it's Duckburg. Because trying to remember the I name. don't remember. But I do anyway. know that some... Adamant Ducktales fans will be have correcting figured us. out that that um, have figured out that if that money bin were real, based on the human, if you compare the ducks to, to a human size, that money bin would have to hold two thirds of the world's gold. Well done, Scrooge McDuck. Fantastic! You're, you're we're right behind you. We're getting very close with our podcasting. Thank, thank you to listeners, subscribers. Let's I'm going to read you. Book. Okay, so the book, this fake book. And you're yeah. gonna be like this fake author of this fake book. Well, not really, but like, okay. it, no, more like though. If you got this kind of criticism, how would you deal with it? Like, what would you do? How would you acknowledge it? Would you just ignore it? Would you just move on? Would you, would you um, try and incorporate what specific things? All right. Anyways, here we go. The book is called "The Kerfuffle of Blah." Oh Lord, it's a lovely title. Okay. <laughs> by by Mohammed Smith, which is literally a combination of the most common first name and the most common last name of the world. Mohammed is the most common first. Okay, never mind. Go on. Yeah, I mean, yes, it is actually. I was surprised too. But you know, to be fair, there's a lot of Islamic people out there, and yeah, they, they like was... naming it after their their prophet. We don't see yep. a lot. You don't see a lot of people named Jesus. That's more the Hispanic people, and they call it Jesus. <laughs> right, because the pronunciation. But anyway, all right. So here's an so example. We're great. Of blah. So this is a positive review. Way too positive, okay? All right. OMG, the kerfuffle blah is the most brilliant, hilarious, suspenseful, romantic, thrilling, tragic, witty, ironic, intellectually stimulating, fun for the whole family explosion fest I've ever read in this year or any year. I will never again read such a work of art, and I personally recommend we go to the Louvre, take out the Mona Lisa, <laughs> throwing it into a burning dumpster, and replace it with a copy of Mohammed Smith's instant classic. Shakespeare who? <laughs> <laughs> and this guy gives and this guy gives a lot of uh, you know, things that could actually be better. He talks about the will they won't they subplots and what was the thing right the thing right before that? The opening was, battle sequence. Opening battle was too long. <laughs> I thought it was a funny idea to imagine this book called The Kerfuffle Plot has a big opening <laughs> battle well, sequence. Well, I mean, it is, a, it is a kerfuffle, so that makes oh, sense. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's, it seems more like a catastrophe if it's a battle <laughs> scene. <laughs> uh, right. This is the unabashedly negative review on the complete opposite side of the first one. All right. <laughs> well, at least now it'll be a long time before I run out of toilet paper. <laughs> the Kerfuffle Plot... By Mohammed Smith is such a travesty. Calling it bad is an insult to other bad things like slavery and world hunger. This book's <laughs> existence, I feel, is enough justification for a nuclear apocalypse. Because we honestly deserve to burn in radioactive fallout for allowing this abomination to surface. To quote legendary radio star Garrison Keillor, this book's main flaw is that the print is legible. Okay, and here, I've got the ending for it. They've spent the whole, the whole story trying to escape the zombies. They realize they can't. They're on top of... They're by that statue of Jesus because of irony. Right, right? because of the irony. <laughs> and also because it's a big mountain. Yeah, right? it's, so, they're trying um, to get up. They've got a lot of um, zombies surrounding them. They realize that this, this is the end. So they decide to just deal with it. They kiss. As they kiss, one of them gets bitten. And since they're kissing, that causes the zombie virus to transfer from one to the is other. That a realistic, is that a realistic thing? I was going to say, you know, at what point did they know. just say, screw it, let's have... Let's have uh, our marriage coupling under the Jesus statue while we can. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so they, they're, they're, they're consummating the marriage. Consummating so, the marriage. The zombies come in. <laughs> this is like that ghost in uh, It Follows. Oh it's a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay, so they both become zombies, and then they live happily ever after. I mean, undeadly ever after. And their kid is stillborn. You know, you know that the manuscript that you gave me. I didn't feel like recycling, so I burned it because it was that much garbage. You I, know, <laughs> I had to throw away my glasses because I didn't want to. I didn't want to see it again. again. Ever again. Oh. Buy my book, by the way. I mean, I guess you don't have to. Do whatever you want. But my book, Megazog, is on Amazon. And, and if you go to the right I, library, you could check it out. Oh, only at one library right now, so it doesn't really... The, if you're at the so. right library... Okay, fine. If you guys happen to be at the Highlands Ranch Library in Highlands Ranch, Colorado, it's there. <laughs> Deep in the But if you're mountains. not, sucks to suck, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just spend your hard-earned money on, on, it, on Amazon, Kindle, and print. I'm doing Absolutely. a really great job selling this book, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> They're selling like hotcakes. <laughs> Everyone is just lining up because of how nicely I'm asking them to <laughs> to support my art. Well, and something else to throw out, too. I mean, you obviously published <laughs> Megazoic because we talked about that last time, but I, at this point, you don't really see much of the people who are reading your book, right? I know. At this point, there's people reading it that I don't know of, although... Again, I still haven't gotten a negative response. I haven't even gotten a, oh, it's fine. Everyone who, I've, who has read it has really loved it. Like, one of my coworkers, her kids are going nuts over it. Like, it's overwhelming, honestly. And I'm really scared about that negative review, because it's going to happen. The first negative review. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. I hate this because dinosaurs are poo-poo. And I'm like, well, I guess it wasn't for you then. <laughs> I just can't help but imagine somebody who's our age talking like that and wonder, geez, when did you never grow up or something? When did you grow in, Not only did you not grow up, but you somehow got a job in professional criticism. <laughs> I want you to read a book, right? <laughs> yeah, please read the book. At this point, though, you might even have to read the book. After <laughs> I don't know. At this point, anyway. you can't read the book, but not too. Don't wait too long. <laughs> you know, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't get too, too upset. But honestly, at this point, probably the only way people are going to discover this podcast, listen to all these episodes, is if they have read the book. <laughs> so, <laughs> but speaking of which, um, where can people get a hold of us? Oh. Now, I mean, you don't really, you don't have a lot to contribute, so just nod. I mean, we can't see you nod. Yes, <laughs> you're correct. <laughs> Alright, so, if you want to get a hold of either of us, um, have a question for either of us, email me, at m-a-t-t-d, at m-a-t-t-h-e-w-d-o-n-a-l-d-c-r-e-a-t-o-r.com, and Matt D at matthewdonnacreator.com, for any questions or comments. Um, if you have a specific question for me, or, or David here, specify which one. Um, you can use your own email system or the contact page on my website at matthewdonaldcreator.com. I don't want to spell it out again. <laughs> uh, Please tell me you're not going to spell it out every episode. You'd think they'd figure out it isn't enough. But... Yeah, <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, I just like to make absolutely sure people know exactly. No, I, I, I understand. There have been people who... I mean, one of the biggest things with like the name Matt is that people insist on, unless you tell them to spell it with two Ts, they like spelling it with one. See, I don't get that. People ask me that all the time. Like, when they ask me for my name, like, Matt. I'm like, is that with one T or two? I want to say, who the hell have you seen with their name Matt that's one T? And I was, and my favorite response is, you can't walk on me. There are two Ts. <laughs> all right, so you can also follow my Twitter at MatthewDon64. Why 64? Because, I gotta let you know the secret, I'm actually the 64th Matthew Donald clone in a line of Matthew Donald clones seated throughout the world by our future alien overlords for unknown purposes. We've all do different things. I'm pretty certain Matthew Donald 63 is a crack smuggler. Uh, I don't oh, good know. Lord. Um, <laughs> good Lord. Matthew Donald 65, I hear, is a fun party guy. Maybe he knows Matthew Donald 63. That's why he's such a fun party guy. <laughs> what does that have anything to do? I, I would think it would be 69 that would be the... Oh, I knew you were going to do that! <laughs> <laughs> I knew that! Oh. <laughs> oh, forgive uh. our childish sense of humor, listeners. Or my Twitter account, at MatthewDonald64. Why 64? Because that's when I was born, obviously. I'm 53 <laughs> years old. <laughs> I know a couple of episodes I said I was 25. That was a complete and total lie. Yeah. I am 53. He's, yeah, he's been he's been working on 25 for a few years. <laughs> yeah, but about, I've been working on 25 for the last 28 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's why my hair is thinning. It should be thinning at this point. I'm an old man. <laughs> Which is at uh, Matthew Donald sixty four, um, Y sixty four. Um, 
I, I made a joke last time, so I'm going to tell you a serious answer this time. Okay, so so back on the Bionicle forum, <laughs> um, my username started out as Pohatu64. I changed it later, but it's just, my favorite character back then was Pohatu, and I just picked 64. Now, why did I pick 64 back then? Who knows? Wait, I That's the serious saying, answer. Well, I was going to make the joke of Nintendo, maybe, but I don't remember you having Well, we made that so. one last episode. <laughs> also, the only console I play is the Nintendo 64. I still play it every day to this day. Diddy Kong Racing! Sure, still play the Nintendo 64. Be real! That's I enough filler you've... for this time. I was about to say, I think you've heard enough about uh, hypothesizing where 64 came from. But anyway... Oh, by the way, speaking enjoyed... of which... um. I totally forgot the usual intro to this podcast. So I'm going to say at the end, Welcome, fellow nerds, to <laughs> another episode of The Ritwit, the show where we sometimes do it backwards the for show, no reason the show at all. us two twits talk about ridding. We may not right. be great, but we know we're better than you. Even though we forget to do the damage. <laughs> <laughs> we're so professional in our discussions, aren't we, David? Professional is the first word that comes to my mind, Donald. What's the second? The second is, wow, because I need more practice. <laughs> because neither of us could come to a consensus, our overall it's Widowmaker. Best it's Widowmaker. Fun, it's not Widowmaker. Then you got to shout your choice too. It's, it's Widowmaker. ScarJo. Widowmaker. On. It is Scarlett Johansson. That butt is so good that he, she's called Widowmaker because any one man who sees it has a heart attack and dies. ScarJo birthed a meme because of her ass. Dude, Widowmaker's birthed several memes. <laughs> there was a glitch in Overwatch where at the beginning this was an accident. No, this she sucks. activated this her visor as her ultimate, and then her butt would get bigger. <laughs> the developers had to have put that in. Had to have put that in as a joke, but I. Oh, it, but there's a cannot, gift for it. You cannot convince me that it's Widowmaker because here's the thing. Widowmaker is the only computer-generated image on this list. Are you saying anime butts aren't real? I'm saying that I mean, animated they aren't real. butts aren't weighed as heavily in my mind. But they I can be sculpted. Be they can be sculpted perfectly to the point where no real butts could compare. So <laughs> professional Jeez. here. Anyway. We'll so welcome, fellow you. nerds, and goodbye, fellow nerds. This has been another episode of The Ritwit. <laughs> I'm Matt Donald and I'm Matt David thanks for listening to our collaborative effort we'll see you next why time why am I published I am not professional <laughs> at all uh, wow so many great memories just listening to that brings a tear to my eye although I'm not sure if it's because of the heartwarming feelings or the sheer cringe from all our jokes glad you listened and hopefully you enjoyed it but you know if you've gotten to this point if you're listening to me right now you enjoyed it, or you're just a masochist, or you like laughing at us. All of which is entirely possible. Alright, so long.